welcome to the video guys. As I've been saying for weeks, with Brexit getting closer, the Ramonas are going to be out in full force. They absolutely hate the idea of the UK being an independent nation and will do whatever they can and say whatever they can to try and stop it. Now, some of you might be sitting there saying the extension deadline has passed, which of course it has, but that doesn't mean things can't change and the government, even though it doesn't look like they're going to, could well sell us out. This always needs to be remembered, but at this point, it's not really that likely, but always a possibility. In this video, we are going to look at plans for Brexit, the reactions to it, and even some Remainers actually changing sides and saying we should go for a Brexit, even if it is a WTO one. Now, before we get into the couple of stories we're going to look at relating to these Remainers, the switching sides, and of course the screaming and shouting, I have moved the daily live streams over to Twitch. So if you want to come and join me over there for the daily live streams, the link will be down in the video description as always, along with the channel's other links. Now, let's get back to the video and this article here we have from the BBC, headlining Gove Defends £705 million plan for border posts and staff. This is obviously because the Ramonian media and Twitter have been screaming and shouting that the government are spending 705 million on sorting out the border. So when Brexit fully happens, we are prepared and there will be no chaos that the Ramonas have all been screaming about. I do find it rather funny that they were screaming and shouting that we won't be ready. But as soon as the government tries to get us ready for this situation they're so worried about, they all scream and shout about how much money is being spent on it. Now, I won't read for all of this because we don't need to. We've got a couple of more articles to look at with the Ramonas screaming and shouting and even some prominent Remain campaigners switching sides and now being what you would consider an actual Brexiteer. Cabinet Minister Michael Gove has defended his plans for new post-Brexit border infrastructure after Labour said the government was unprepared. So preparing for it now is something Labour will attack you for, despite of course already attacking them for not being prepared. Which goes to show Labour really is not a political party, it's more like a bunch of activists screaming and shouting about absolutely anything they can. A £705 million funding package to help manage Britain's borders has been announced as the UK prepares to leave the EU Customs Union at the end of the year. Mr Gove insisted the government had been laying groundwork for months, but Labour's Rachel Reeves said the plans were too little too late. The funding announcement follows a leaked letter from the International Trade Secretary Liz Truss raising concerns about the readiness of Britain's ports, which actually, last I heard on this story, there were questions about whether that letter was actually even from Liz Truss or not. This is what a Conservative MP said anyway. I don't actually know if she ever admitted to writing it. As far as I'm aware, she hasn't. I could obviously be wrong. Under the plans, new border posts will be created inland where existing ports have no room to expand to cope with the extra checks that will be required. It relates only to external borders of England, Scotland and Wales, Mr Gove told BBC's Andrew Marr programme that more details will be set out about the situation for Northern Ireland later this month. The new funding will include up to £470 million to build port and inland infrastructure and £235 million will be allocated for IT systems and staffing. The money for IT systems and staffing includes £100 million to develop HM revenue and custom systems to reduce the burden on traders, £20 million on new equipment, £15 million towards building new data infrastructure to improve border flow and management, £10 million to recruit around 500 more border staff. What are you talking about? The Labour Party reckon you can hire 50,000 border staff with that 10 million. We all know what school of mathematics they went to. Cabinet Office Minister Mr Gove said the funding would help the UK seize the opportunities post-Brexit. No, it will just be the bare minimum required to keep trade going because obviously this is not going to stop the immigration situation in any way, shape or form. And let's be honest, 500 more border staff just gives them more opportunities to send out the taxis into the middle of the channel. Now, following on from that, we obviously had the Ramon in Rag, the Guardian, screaming and shouting, talking about how UK firms are unprepared for Brexit, the study shows. Now, obviously, being the Guardian, you know the sort of people they are, directors of companies who I am willing to bet 99% of them, if not more, was also on the Remain side to the point of the Guardian themselves. We all know these big businesses love EU freedom of movement because it keeps the wages down in this country at the end of the day, which is obviously something something a business wants since money walks and bullshit talks. But here it says only one in four companies are prepared for Britain's full departure from the European Union in five months time, company directors have warned. And that essentially tells you all you really need to know about it. 
Now, I didn't bother reading through any of that Guardian article because it's absolute bollocks. Because the former CEO of Sainsbury's and Remain campaigner absolutely demolishes everything they had to say. So we'll take a quick look at this before we end the video. It headlines Justin King, why a no-deal Brexit won't be a disaster. Meaning no Brexit at all will be a disaster even if we get a deal. I campaigned for Remain and subsequently the people's vote. It is still my view that we would have been better together. So he didn't just campaign for Remain, he actually went against the democratic choice of these people and asked for a people's vote after we had already made the decision. So I will tell you now, given what he is saying here, he has made a complete turnaround of his opinion over the last couple of years, mainly since the election in December, as we can see here. With the general election in December, that debate was effectively concluded and we left the European Union on the 31st of January, starting a transition period which ends on the 31st of December this year. So here we have a Ramona that at least lives in reality, knowing that we have left the EU and the debate is effectively concluded, though I would say it is completely concluded at this point. It seems clear that we all, as citizens and businesses, should be preparing for that day. But over the course of the last few months, the coronavirus crisis and all its consequences has dominated our lives. Yeah, and over the last month, woke virtue signaling has dominated our lives more than the coronavirus, that is for sure. It has been argued that this means we should extend the transition. I don't agree. Just think for a moment what this means. In transition, we continue to be tied to all European rules and regulations, and we continue to pay our contribution. This lack of flexibility and drain on resources is something we can ill afford at this time. In any event, we have passed a deadline for an extension and our government has confirmed to the EU that the transition will come to an end on the 31st of December. That is the date. It will not move, so we must plan for it. You don't often hear Remainers and people who actually wanted a people's vote after the democratic decision was made in 2016 coming out with words like this and accepting the basic reality of it while calling out the EU for being a complete waste of money, especially at this time. The current crisis means that our starting point for exiting the EU is much worse than any envisaged. The way we live our lives has changed. For the long term, there will be significant unemployment, particularly in the sector I know best, retail and hospitality. Our country will be burdened by debt, unprecedented in peacetime. In that sense, it truly has been a war. The governor of the Bank of England, Andrew Bailey, believes a V-shaped recovery is possible. For that to be achieved, we will need the best trade deals with the EU, which still account for 50% of our trade. We must also fully exploit the freedom that comes with this to agree new terms of trade throughout the world, particularly with the USA, our biggest partner after the EU, and could well become our biggest partner post-Brexit once we actually start doing deals with them and are not tied to the European Union. Every business person I talk to says the crisis has forced the creation of new and more efficient ways of working and making decisions. A greater focus on the outcome, less distraction and provocation. We must demand our politicians and their officials the same approach. Yeah, let's just leave on WTO terms right now. Some businesses have expressed concerns that with the time pressure, a so-called no-deal Brexit becomes more likely. Whilst that is true, I don't believe that is a disaster we should all fear. Well, the Remainers, the Guardian, Labour and the rest of them are now screaming in absolute shit fits that this guy has betrayed them and come over to this side and speak in a bunch of sense. I would consider a hastily agreed soft Brexit much more likely to be the worst of both worlds and an outcome we should avoid. Tied largely to the rules we no longer influence and have any control over, with little freedom to unlock our unique potential with the rest of the world. I am actually stunned that this is coming from a Remainer and a People's Vote campaigner. I don't know about you guys, but this is definitely a rarity to me. A willingness to embrace no deal as a possibility is also an excellent negotiating tactic and an option I therefore expect to stay on the table right up to the moment a deal is concluded. Which is something we have all been screaming since the dawn of time, but to reason as May went against that and said, no, we can't go for a no deal, and then the Parliament tried to sell us out. Luckily, we had a say, voted in Boris Johnson, and now it's all on his head to get it done. As Donald Rumsfeld said, there are no knowns and things we do not know, known unknowns. It seems to me these final few months can be characterised in this way. 
a surprising amount of the information we need to prepare properly, we do in fact have already. As the government's campaign launching today says, businesses should check, change and be ready to go. But there is much we can also do to prepare for the known unknowns. For example, we can be certain as to the precise details of things like tariffs and the paperwork necessary to support them. But we can be sure that they will exist and that our businesses will need the capability to prepare and process them. Such groundwork does not require that we know the final details. It is no longer possible to argue for delay, nor is it prudent to hope for the softest of soft Brexits where nothing really changes. We must use the lessons learned in recent months to swiftly gain whatever advantage Brexit can bring to support rapid economic recovery we all need now. Well, I've got to say, that guy sounds like he has become rather red-pilled to the Brexit situation and how the economy will be benefiting from it in the future. So, despite all the Remainers screaming and shouting, it would seem some at least are moving over to the light and joining us in what level of democracy we actually have, which, to be honest, it seems like Brexit is all we're going to get at this rate. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. <laughs>